So there we go. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today at the CNCF Live webinar, Securing Your Workload Communications with Open Service Mesh. I'm Libby Schultz, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. I'll read our code of conduct and then hand over to Philip Gibson, Senior Product Program Manager at Microsoft. A few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you're not able to speak as an attendee, but there is a chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. Please feel free to drop all of your questions there, and we will get to as many as we can either in the middle when it's pertinent or throughout at the end. This is an official webinar of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that code of conduct and please be respectful of all of your fellow participants and presenters. Please also note that the recording and slides will be posted later today to the CNCF online programs page at community.cncf.io under online programs. They are also available via your registration link and the recording will be available on our online programs YouTube playlist. With that, I will hand it over to Philip to kick off today's presentation. All right, thank you, Libby, for that intro. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for showing up. Uh, I think we got a really good session today. Uh, we're going to be focused on really around securing your workload communications, how you can actually uh, add a little more security or strengthen your security posture uh, with your uh, Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so our agenda is going to look like this. So get the slides moving along here. Uh, we'll do a quick overview of OSM for those who may not be uh, familiar with the, the service mesh. Uh, and then again, uh, this is gonna be pretty demo heavy. I got some uh, recorded uh, demos here that are probably newer than what you've seen out there. And um, I, I would have done this live, but again, uh, we wanna make sure that there's no network disconnects, et cetera. Uh, but this is the demo list. Uh, we're gonna start off uh, doing our traffic access uh, demo and uh, stay tuned for that. We'll, we'll talk about it. Uh, we're gonna build a little storyline around uh, some of these demos leading into the next integration. Uh, and then after that, we'll talk about the OPA uh, integration uh, and then we'll move on to our contour uh, integration. So to allow you to do true end-to-end -end, uh, encryption from uh, TL TLS to the back backend uh, MTLS uh, you know, workloads in your environment. Uh, and then we'll finish up with the egress uh, workloads, how you can actually control uh, what your pods are communicating to uh, outside the cluster. So uh, I'm excited about this. A lot of these integrations here have been driven by the community. Uh, they've actually uh, were things that we've uh, kind of put more priority on in the backlog. Uh, so thanks to uh, all those who participated in uh, letting us know the uh, use cases that you're most interested in. So uh, OSM, this is... Uh, probably the newest service mesh in the community. Uh, we open source uh, around July, 2019. And our core principles have always been uh, to provide a very simplified experience uh, for the most common use cases uh, of a service mesh. Um, you know, we're not into the speeds and feeds race. Um, you know, one thing that we do feel uh, really good about uh, with OSM is uh, we are using a very tried and true uh, data plane, uh, which is uh, the Envoy proxy. And so a lot of our backlog is really about just opening up a lot of the Envoy functionality in a, in a very elegant way uh, that is very simplified for, for the operator. So again, these are kind of our core principles, being simple, effortless to install, maintain, and operate, painless to troubleshoot, and again, easy to configure a VVSMI specification, which if you're not familiar with that specification, um, this is kind of a abstraction layer uh, you know, for service meshes uh, so that consumers of service meshes can really experience a simplified API uh, integration experience with their apps, tooling, and everything else. So uh, this is a growing ecosystem and uh, we look to really build out a lot more functionality in the original spec going forward. So if you have any questions or wanna know more about the SMI spec, you can go to smi-spec.io and uh, you'll see a lot of documentation on, on the actual spec itself. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into uh, our demos. Um, I'm a visual guy, so when I do demos, I know it's a bunch of, I like to say it's a bunch of text flying back and forth. So uh, I, I keep my PowerPoint animation skills uh, going here where I kind of 
give you a, a you know a preview of what you're going to see in the actual demo itself, right? So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do the traffic access uh, demo, and again, there's going to be a little twist at the end here. We're going to build upon a story, and and then you can see if something like this could exist in your environment as well. Uh, but we'll start off with deploying uh, our book buyer and our bookstore uh, demo application. Uh, we'll have OSM installed, enabled uh, to manage both the book buyer and the bookstore namespaces where those applications are deployed. And then uh, we have this permissive uh, traffic mode being true, which means that um, you know we're going to pass traffic through the Envoy sidecars, uh, but we're not going to require any additional policies. Uh, so this allows you to easily kind of onboard your environment and then figure out which policies that you want to really mandate who can, commun can communicate in the mesh itself. So uh, once we do that, um, obviously, uh, you know, we have the Envoy uh, proxies and then everything's going to run smooth at this point. Uh, we'll turn it to false and then again, we'll deploy our policies out there. And then you'll see that the book buyer will still be able to communicate to uh, the bookstore v1 service there. Um, oh, actually, I got ahead of myself. Um, actually, when we flip the permissive mode to false, that means we're going to have to have a, a policy. We'll then create that policy, deploy it out into the cluster, and then that's going to resume our communications back uh, for, for the uh, bookstore application. Now, here's the twist, right? Uh, we have our service mesh. Uh, we have a explicit policy allowing book buyer to only speak to bookstore v1 that's really kind of what you're going to want to use a mesh for this is all mtls uh you know encrypted but on top of that we actually have a specific policy saying that book buyer can only speak to uh, bookstore uh, v1 but what if someone in your environment goes rogue right what, what if one of your operators goes rogue you know uh so what if we spin up a new uh, service maybe you know about it maybe you don't and uh, you have, again, maybe this is a rogue admin who has been paid or knows who this <laughs> application is. And what's stopping them from allowing the book thief to talk to the bookstore? And again, you know, as we progress through all of these demos, you're going to see how we can kind of, you know, thwart some of this type of activities in your environment. And you'll see how easy it is for an admin who has uh, permissions to do so, be they, being able to allow this type of activity. So let's go ahead and get into the demo itself. Uh, we're going to start off and we're going to create our, we're going to take a look at our pods here. And I'm not sure why that is not going, but okay. So it's the play button. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we already have our book buyer or, or the bookstore application deployed. So we'll just take a look at those pods itself. And you'll see that uh, we have our book buyer, bookstore, book warehouse all deployed. Simple three-tier kind of microservice application. And then uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the list of all of the namespaces that OSM is currently managing to provide service mesh functionality. So uh, you'll see again, book buyer, bookstore, book warehouse all enabled. Uh, so everything is good there. Next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to take a look at the permissive mode, the current uh, permissive mode. Uh, what I'm showing you here is just the book buyer. You'll see it's two of two. So you have your application container alongside your, your Envoy sidecar proxy as well. So everything is uh, all configured. So now let's go ahead and just take a look in the uh, query and see what our current status is for permissive, permissive mode. Uh, it is set to true. Again, that's going to allow us to pass traffic with no explicit uh, policies in the mesh. And um, what we'll do here quickly is uh, we're going to query onto the book buyer pod, and then we're going to list logs and just verify that it can speak to uh, our bookstore v1 service here. And so uh, our standard out, the way we're formatting this is uh, you can see it's hitting the bookstore endpoints. Uh, that traffic is traversing through the Envoy sidecar proxy. We're getting a 200 OK. So at this point, everything's OK. Book buyer is able to speak to the bookstore and purchase books. So next thing we'll do is really, again, what you want to service mesh for is to kind of control the, the levels of access going on inside your cluster. We're going to go ahead and uh, change the permissive mode uh, policy here or setting. And we're going to patch this over to be false. And that's going to instruct the OSM controller to 
uh, ask for specific routing rules or traffic access rules to allow traffic to happen inside the mesh. So as soon as we do that, uh, we can go back and tail the logs off the book buyer and you'll see that instantly um, that traffic has been stopped. It can no longer communicate to books or uh, V1 service. And so that's, that's great. That's what you want the service mesh for. Next thing what we'll do is uh, let's go ahead and just allow the book buyer to speak to the bookstore. So we got an explicit rule here. Um, I won't go into the manifest. This is all kind of uh, public here. It's on our uh, repos, but essentially this is saying, hey, book buyer can speak to the bookstore if you want service. Once that's deployed, again, we can go ahead and tail those logs and we see that uh, access or, or the communications has been resumed from the book buyer being able to talk to the bookstore. So great. That, that's that's what we want. Now, here's where we get a little, uh, you know, it, things get a little interesting, right? So this is kind of the, some of the rogue activities that could happen in the environment. So we're going to go ahead and create a namespace for Book Thief. And we're going to then add that namespace to uh, OSM to be able to manage. So we're actually going to bring that namespace into the mesh. And then we're going to go ahead and deploy the Book Thief service or application. And again, it's going to want to speak to uh, the bookstore service to steal books as, as a thief would, would want to do. And so right now, our policies are only allowing the book buyer to talk to the bookstore. So if we go ahead and tail the logs off of the book thief, we should see that it's going to be blocked because there's no explicit policy allowing this activity to happen. And there you go. So at this point, your mesh is protecting you, right? You have a new service uh, in the mesh. There's no explicit policies to allow so. And so uh, your bookstore V1 service is protected. But what if you have somebody who's going to go rogue, right? You have an admin or an operator who has the permissions to kind of override this activity. Uh, maybe your RBAC is, is not in place here. So uh, what you're seeing here is, hey, here's an operator. They have permissions to do so. They're going to go ahead and edit the actual traffic access policies. And they're just simply going to add the book thief to the manifest and allow it to then talk to the bookstore. And so again, this is on the fly. So this kind of goes around any CI CD process, et cetera. It's just on the fly editing, allowing uh, the book thief here. We're just going to add uh, the kind here, which is going to be the service account that represents book thief, uh, the name itself, which is going to be book thief. And then the namespace that book thief uh, lives in which is again, book thief, we kind of try to make this real simple for everyone. And so again, on the fly editing, as in most operators may have the opportunity to do so or the ability to do so, uh, we'll save that out. Okay, so we've edited that traffic access policy. Let's now go ahead and tail the logs of book thief and voila, it now has access to steal books from uh, the bookstore. And so again, uh, you know, this is really to show that, yes, a service mesh can protect you. It can actually give you the encryption that you're looking for. But again, it's not a one-stop shop in really securing your cluster. There's other things that you're going to want to look into and investigate to really heighten up your posture of, of communication inside your cluster. So how do we get this rogue admin uh, to not, you know, turn things on that shouldn't be on? Uh, so the next thing you're going to see is our OSM OPA integration. And this is really the extension from Envoy, which allows Envoy to actually have an external uh, authorization, uh, you know, system or policy to really, you know, have an additional set of guards or gates to ensure that, you know, your policies are what they are. And so what you're going to see here is, uh, again, just as, just as we left off, uh, Book Thief is stealing books from bookstore. <laughs> and so what we're going to do is we're going to deploy OPA. If you're not familiar with the Open Policy Agent, this is basically a, uh, a project around uh, policies for Kubernetes. And in this uh, instance here, I do have OPA deployed in the same cluster just as a demo. Most likely in your environment, you're going to want to have OPA deployed outside of the cluster 
somewhere that, where there's more guarantees of who has access to implement policies in their environment. So we'll deploy LPA. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have this policy and we're going to tell LPA that, hey, only the book buyer can talk to the bookstore. And we'll deploy that. Now, again, the, the local OSM traffic access policy is still allowing the book thief to talk to the bookstore. But now we're going to have this additional check, this additional external authorization provider to ensure that our policies are correct. So we'll have that deployed. And then what you, what's going to happen now is, is part of the communication handshake is uh, both book buyer and book thief now have to go to the OPA and say, hey, or do you have a policy for me to be able to talk to the bookstore if you want? We're going to configure the OPA policy to allow uh, the book buyer to speak to book, bookstore V1, but we're not going to have a policy that's going to allow book thief to talk to bookstore V1. And so you'll see that this is a way that you can actually uh, control some of the activities going on uh, in your mesh. So let's go ahead and, and see that in action. And I'll go ahead and we got the play button going. So again, um, let's just verify the OSM traffic that's happening here. We're going to take a look at the book buyer. And we're going to, again, just tell us logs and ensure that it can still talk to the bookstore service. And so again, it, it's happy. This is normal. Uh, we're then going to go and look at our, our book thief pod. And we're going to tell uh, it's standard out and see if it can still talk to the or still still books from the, the bookstore service. And it can, because again, there's a local traffic access policy uh, that allows it to do so in the mesh. Uh, so now what we're going to do is let's go ahead and set up this external provider that's going to actually uh, give us an additional gate of authorization in, inside the mesh itself. So we'll go ahead and we'll create a uh, namespace for OPA. And then we'll deploy the OPA uh, application in that namespace. And then here's where our integration is. So we have to edit our OSM mesh config. And we're going to go down and we're going to basically tell the mesh config that, hey, I want you to also use this external provider being OPA. So what we got to do is we got to turn that on first. We'll, we'll turn that to true. And then uh, we just have to give it the address to the endpoint of OPA. You know, that's going to be your policy engine. that has. And then uh, its port itself, that's going to be port 9191 default ports for open policy agent. And so now again, what we've instructed is again, the Envoy extension in the sidecar to say, hey, don't just pass the normal OSM local rules, actually go out to this provider as well and validate that those rules exist. So what, since we added this external provider, all of the communication is stopped in the mesh because we have no rules in OPA at this point that's gonna pass anything. So it defaults to false. So you'll see that we got a status 503. Don't mind some of this other uh, standard out. We got to fix some of, the, some of the way we were logging this. But uh, we basically looked at both the book buyer and the, and the book thief. They can't access anything. So now let's go ahead and edit uh, OPA and give it some rules uh, that's going to allow just only the book buyer to speak to the bookstore. And real quick, we're just going to look at the logs coming out of OPA. Uh, if you're familiar with this, there's a bunch of decision IDs. It's kind of computing everything, and you'll see that uh, in those attempts, everything was a false. So that's why none of the book buyer or the book thief was able to speak to uh, the bookstore service. Let's now, um, and, and again, we're just verifying here that your local OSM service service policy is allowing uh, both the book buyer and the book thief to speak to the bookstore service. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to now create this uh, OPA policy. Uh, if you're familiar with the, the Rego uh, template, we're going to say, uh, the you know, for, for bookstore, uh, we're going to do a Git request to that path, books bought, and we're only going to allow the book buyer. And there's a couple of endpoints. Uh, we also need to get the, uh, the Git new book endpoint. But this is essentially the policy that's going to be uh, configured for OPA to look against all the, the lookups that are coming from Envoy to it. And so we'll go ahead and deploy that. And we simply just have to do a restart on OPA so it picks up that configuration.
And so now that OPA has this policy, uh, again, in addition to the local OSM policy, say, okay, yes, I'm gonna allow the book buyer to speak to the bookstore. You can see that the communication has been resumed. And again, this is an external uh, authorization provider. And if we simply, again, look at the book thief, you'll notice that it is still blocked. Even though there's a local OSM policy that says the book thief can speak to the book the bookstore, that extra hop going back to OPA to validate those rules is prohibiting the book thief from speaking to the bookstore. And we're just simply going to just look at the, uh, the, 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 I'm sorry, the decision law coming out of uh, OPA, and you'll see that the results are true for uh, the book buyer uh, speaking to the bookstore. So again, this is another way that you can actually have uh, a heightened security, an extra gate of security, if you're in a, one of these very secured environments, to ensure that uh, your local operators cannot change anything going on in the mesh. And again, this OPA instance can be in a different cluster that has a whole different set of RBAC rules that your normal operators do not have. Okay, so that is the OPA integration. All right, um, so this next integration, and we get a lot of questions about this. Um, you know, we were asked uh, many times if uh, we were gonna actually build a specific uh, ingress for OSM. And uh, we, we kind of looked to see kind of what was out there in the community. And obviously um, Contour is a very uh, well-known and, and trusted ingress. And so we actually worked with the Contour team to actually uh, bring that functionality into OSM. And so we, we believe this is a really good kind of uh, collaboration inside the, the CNCF community. And so what we're gonna show you what you can do with Contour is, is a lot of things really um, around the ETE uh, you know, full encryption from your TLS to the MTLS backend. So uh, what you're going to see here is uh, we're going to have we already have we're going to have our contour ingress deployed. We're going to deploy a sample app. This is the HTTP bin uh, app here uh, because we're going to test some of uh, some things a little, a little later here. But uh, so we have that app deployed, and then uh, with contour, which can, what you can do is you can actually I'll put a policy to say, hey, this ingress is only allowed to talk to this back end. So at this point, you're already securing the communications uh, between the ingress to whatever back end workloads that you have. So again, if you've not identified this or configured it, any other service in your cluster, uh, that ingress will, will not route any traffic to. Uh, so the policies are, are very fine grained. And so what we'll see here is uh, just uh, standard HTTP uh, you're going to have an external client be able to uh, get the contour ingress and then get access into our application here, uh, HTTP bin application. Now, beyond that, uh, again, the question that we get is, hey, how can I get full ETE uh, encryption, you know, from my external clients coming into the ingress and then back to our backend workloads? And what we're able to do is we're able to share the CA bundle that comes from uh, OSM, and we're able to uh, take that cert, put it onto the contour ingress, and then that's going to allow us to basically pass off the TLS encryption to MTLS to the back end. And so you will essentially will have a true end-to-end -end encryption path uh, for all that for that communication that, that's happening. And so that'll all check out here. Um, next thing we can do is, uh, again, we talked about, you know, really authorizing the ingress to talk to backends, et cetera. Uh, if we ended up renaming this, this ingress to a different name, that's not a uh, CN name uh, for the ingress to talk to the backend, uh, all that traffic will stop too. So those certs are very specific to uh, those running instances in your, in your cluster there. And so with that, let's go ahead and, and show this in action here. We're gonna just export some variables for some downstream, uh, some downstream um, configurations that we're gonna need. And so we'll look at the OSM list. And so currently, uh, right now, we just have the OSM system. We're gonna now deploy uh, 
or we're going to look at the, the service for Envoy in that OSM system. You'll see that we have Envoy up, I'm sorry, not Envoy, Contour <laughs> up and running as a load balancer. So our ingress is live. And then uh, what we have to do is uh, to restrict the traffic, we just have to create a annotation there uh, for the, uh, the namespace itself. And then um, for some of the commands downstream, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab uh, the IP addresses of the actual uh, ingress itself. And then we're gonna deploy our sample application. So we're gonna go ahead and create the namespace for the HTTP bin app, uh, add it to uh, OSM to manage that from a service mesh perspective. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the deploy for that application. And then let's just get an enumeration on those pods for the application. You see we're up and running with 202 application pod, I'm sorry, application container, as well as the Envoy sidecar. And then uh, our service endpoint is up and running. So now we're gonna go ahead and create the contour ingress specifically for this backend service. And this is all upstream integration. So if you're curious, hey, how do you set this up? Simply visit the contour. Uh, project site, all of the documentation is completely applicable here. And so we got that ingress deployed. And now we're going to do, we're just going to test the application from an HTTP standpoint. So this is not HTTPS, uh, but that's coming across as, as okay. So our external client is able to access that backend service. And now we will actually configure this to be full true end-to-end uh, -end encryption. We'll go ahead and annotate uh, the service here for the TLS. And then we'll create the contour uh, proxy here uh, that's going to make sure that the, the back end will be uh, TLS as well. And so you'll see there's an attribute here if I keep scrolling for the protocol to be uh, HTTPS. Okay, so all of that's deployed. And I mean, you, you won't see anything like magical here uh, other than us getting okay that the traffic is, is happening, but uh, this is actually representing true end-to-end -end encryption from uh, the TLS to the ingress and then that being translated over to MTLS uh, on the back end, and everything comes back okay here. Uh, this next set here, we're just going to verify that um, unauthorized sources uh, can't access uh, the back end here. Uh, again, we're going to kind of change the uh, the name of the, the ingress. And since we've changed the name of the ingress, that ingress is not allowed to talk to the back end. So again, if we do that curl command again, coming from external client, uh, you'll see that um, this is all forbidden. So uh, no, no traffic is able to pass through uh, in the ETE scenario here. And then we can validate the client access here as well. And if we wanted to, we can actually skip all of this. If you wanted to kind of just, you know, if you were testing or something of that nature, uh, we can go ahead and just say, hey, don't enforce those policies. We'll get that deployed, and then we'll do the simple curl command from the external client again, and you'll see that it will then be able to speak to the, to the back end. All right, so again, uh, ETE encryption, I know that's highly desirable. Uh, and I know we had a lot of people in the community ask us how to, how to do that at OSM, and we're able to do that with our Contour uh, integration here. All right. So next, what we want is, um, this isn't really an integration, but this is just a feature that we have, which is really controlling the egress in your environment. Um, so. Uh, you may know or you may not know uh, what workloads are being deployed in your environment. Um, they could be reaching to uh, known endpoints or they could be going to endpoints that 
you don't want them to go to or an authorized endpoint. So here's a simple way that um, we'll look at some of the configuration that OSM allows you to do to actually control the egress uh, communications of the pods or, and or workloads that are being deployed in your, uh, your, your cluster here. So uh, first thing is uh, permissive mode is false. Uh, so again, we're gonna be asking for uh, access policies to, to have traffic pass in the cluster. Um, we do have this notion of the global egress being true. So by default, when you deploy anything, we're gonna just create a simple uh, curl application. We'll, we'll create a curl namespace, we'll deploy the application. And by default, we're gonna allow your workloads, in this case, this pod to just be able to leave the cluster for communication. It'll just be able to hit this endpoint here with no issues. And that may be fine for you, but again, if you wanna ensure that you know about all of the exit communication in your cluster, you may wanna investigate and look into these egress rules uh, that I'm about to show you here. So next thing we'll do is we'll flip the global egress policy to false. And what that's gonna do is that's basically gonna lock down all the communication of your workloads trying to exit, exit the cluster itself. And so what you'll see here is immediately we'll go ahead and uh, exec into this curl uh, app and it won't be able to exit the cluster. And, and that's a good thing. So now you're gonna get into really fine grained controls of which pods in your cluster that you want them to have access to exit the cluster itself. So with that, we'll go ahead and create a specific fine grain policy that's just gonna allow only the curl app to actually exit the cluster. All other workloads will still be confined uh, by the overall global policy here, which is gonna stop all the traffic here. So once we do that, um, we'll go ahead and flip that. And then, so again, we got something specifically saying that yes, the curl app can actually access anything outside the cluster, but again, any other application or workloads running in the cluster will then need their own specific fine grain access policy for, for egress. And so now let's go ahead and show that in action. So we'll start off, we'll just query the uh, OSM meshwide egress policy. And again, that'll come, at, come back as true. So uh, we're gonna allow everything outside the cluster by default. Now let's go ahead and set up our testing app, which is gonna be uh, you know, a, a curl app. So we'll create its namespace. We'll go ahead and add that namespace to OSM to be able to manage. And then we're gonna, head and go, gonna go ahead and deploy the curl app itself and get that deployed into the cluster. Now that we have the curl app deployed, let's go ahead and just exec into it and, do, and then just issue a curl command out to this endpoint here that's outside the cluster. And that comes back as a 200 okay. So again, uh, this pod is able to exit the cluster and hit that endpoint. And now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and disable the global egress policy. So we'll turn that from true to false. And here we're just gonna just verify that that change has happened. So we'll just query the setting there and, and we're false. And so now let's go ahead and do the same uh, curl command here. We'll exec into that running uh, curl pod. And you'll see that it can no longer exit the cluster. So we've actually controlled or basically just turned on the setting that says nothing can actually exit the cluster itself. So now let's go ahead and, and then configure fine grain policies to allow just specifically this curl application to exit the cluster and nothing else. And here's our specific egress policy uh, that is specific to that curl uh, workload.
And so that's been deployed. And now we'll issue that same command again. We'll see if we can curl out to that specific endpoint. And you see that it can. And, and again, with that egress policy, it's very specific to the endpoint. So that curl app couldn't hit any other endpoint that has not been identified in that policy. So you, again, you can get very fine grained controls uh, using this. Next thing we'll do is we'll just show you uh, us removing uh, the policy there. And if we go back and issue the same command, um, it can no longer exit the cluster itself. Okay, so there we go. So that is egress. So that's kind of all the demos. Hopefully um, you saw something there that may inspire you to uh, do something and, and actually heighten your security posture. Uh, next, what we'll do is we're gonna just talk about some of the things that are on the roadmap for OSM uh, coming up here. Uh, we actually, uh, last week or so at uh, Coupon, uh, we made an announcement. So we actually have our v.1.0.org. Uh, that's all available. And uh, the stable version of that is going to actually uh, be available here uh, really soon. Uh, next, we're talking about expanding the SMI functionality. So again, if those are familiar with that specification around really building this abstraction layer for service meshes, um, we think that there's more things uh, that Envoy is doing that we can actually uh, bubble up into that spec to make it more easy to access some of those features such as, uh, you know, retries and circuit breaking, et cetera. So uh, there's, there's a big initiative going around for that. Uh, we're also looking to expand uh, our VM support. So being able to bring things outside of the cluster to the mesh itself. Uh, and we currently have some things that are experimental uh, and so this is out there as well. So please check that out if, if you wanna see how you can bring VMs into your cluster, as well as multi-cluster support. That's uh, been uh, probably one of the hottest topics as of late. Uh, people wanna be able to actually uh, extend these functionalities, these cross-plane controls across multiple clusters. Uh, and so we do actually have that in beta. So if you uh, wanna kick the tires on that, please go ahead and, and go get the latest release and you can test that out. Uh, as well as Windows container support. So we got Envoy supporting Windows now, and uh, we actually just did a demo uh, at this coupon North America showing uh, container support in OSM. And so we're happy about uh, the direction of, of where we're going with that because that's gonna basically open up a lot more workloads that we have customers asking for to be secured by service mesh. Uh, and then last, um, just WASM, WASM filters, extensions, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, activity around the whole WASM space. And so uh, we actually have some of this uh, working and uh, we're actually looking to the community to, to give us a little more feedback on uh, some of the filters or, or just WASM support they're looking for in, in the cluster itself. All right, so that's it for the roadmap. I've not been looking at the, the chat here, but uh, I think we got enough time here. We'll open it up for questions if you have them. Uh, please, anything that you see, you need me to verify or clarify, or you just got any general questions about the OSM project itself. I don't know, Libby or... I see Bridget, you on the call, I don't know, was, was there any questions? Okay, I'm not sure, I guess there's no questions. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, uh, I, I hopefully I don't slaughter your name here, Georges. Uh, thank you for showing up. Thanks. <laughs> uh, I see you, Bridget. Um, okay, yeah, no, no specific questions. Uh, yeah, if you want to get involved, please go out to uh, openservicemesh.io. Uh, that'll be a link to the actual uh, GitHub repo. 
Um, there's tons of kind of uh, first issues that you can get involved with. Um, so yeah, and then we also have our monthly uh, OSM call. I uh, don't have the exact dates, but uh, if you do want to kind of uh, meet some of the maintainers, myself included, uh, you can actually come to those calls. And again, uh, if there's things that you're looking to see uh, happen, uh, you've got a certain use case that you don't see uh, OSM being able to handle, please show up to those calls. Let's, let's have a conversation about it and uh, see if we can uh, include those use cases that we may have not thought of. Okay, I see things are flowing into the... Yeah, so the question, uh, does OSM throttle uh, connection request? Um, not at this time, that is something that's in our backlog. Um, it's basically something we would do from the Envoy level. So as I mentioned earlier, we, we are using the Envoy proxy data plane. So um, you know, we can basically tap into everything that Envoy is doing. Uh, you know, again, our purpose here is to kind of make those configurations super easy. And uh, I believe we do have that as part of our backlog, again, with, with circuit breaking and retries. So uh, you should see that uh, in the product or, or the project soon. Okay, we got a question from uh, Satish. Uh, is OSM CLI a dependency or can everything be done with Coup Control? Uh, yes, you, you will need the OSM binary to interact with uh, the OSM control plane. Uh, and so that, that's much in line with all the other meshes out there. They're going to have a, a very specific binary to configure the service mesh. So uh, yes, so, so the answer is yes. You'll, you'll need to just simply download the OSM binary. And then we have all the documentation on how you configure uh, the service mesh. sure if I missed any. Thank you, Bridget, for adding the community community call uh, dates and times. Do you provide integration for monitoring? Um, answer is yes. So. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can achieve this. Uh, with the open source itself, we do have integration into uh, you know, Prometheus and Grafana. Uh, so you're able to uh, do some monitoring uh, in that way. Um, OSM will also be provided as an add-on to the AKS service in Azure. And uh, once we're on the Azure platform, there's a lot of things we can tap into. So there is integration with Azure Monitor as well. Uh, and in future integration with App Insights actually draw up a lot of uh, some of the distributed views as well. Oops, I think I lost my... Do you support egress? MTLS. Um, so if you're egressing out of the cluster, um, who's ever going to support that is going to be on the other end. So whatever endpoint that you're configuring. So you did see that we configured uh, ingress coming into the cluster via Contour. And so we do support, again, TLS uh, over to MTLS end to end encryption. But uh, anything you're talking about that's going to go outside the cluster, at that point, you become the client and it's going to be on the servicing side and if they're going to support uh, any encryption for you. Hopefully that answers your question there, uh, Satish. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Yes, well, the thanks. recorded version will be ready post-event. Yeah. 
thank you uh, all that showed up. Hopefully you saw something new and uh, excited to try it in your environment. Uh, again, go ahead, kick the tires on this. Uh, if you got any issues, again, um, go to GitHub, post your, your issues. Uh, we're, we're on it. Uh, we got our maintainers are, are looking at those queues quite often. So uh, yeah, feel free to give us some feedback on anything that you've seen here today or anything else that you see in the documentation to try out. Awesome. Thank you so much, Philip. Thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, the recording will be up online later today. You can access it through this link for registration or on our YouTube playlist. Um, and I think that that is it, but thank you so much for your time and we will see y'all at the next live webinar. Thanks everyone for joining us. All right. Thank you.